welcome everybody. I hope you are having an excellent day today uh, and learning a lot. And the next speaker is promising to bring everything together for us and imagine a day in the future where everything that we see today is going to be in our daily lives. My name is Perla Lopez. I am the program director for Acceleration Plus. Acceleration Plus is a partnership of Latin startup, Haltech, Innovation Factory, and Tech Place. We help international startups, many of them are here with us today, scale faster in the Canada and US markets. But let's introduce our next speaker. Ileana Oris Valiente, CPA, CA, CVP, is Managing Director and Canada Innovation Lead at Accenture. She works with senior executives and boards to support their strategic transformation journeys from idea to scale execution, leading multidisciplinary teams across design, data, and the latest emerging technologies. As part of her role, she also oversees the Ventures Group and teams focused on applied R&D in areas such as digital identity, AI, and blockchain. Ileana is widely credited for being a trailblazer in the blockchain industry, having led initiatives to conceptualize and build solutions across industries, focusing on financial services, supply chain, health, and public sector. Ileana's presentation today is Day in the Life of a Human in 2025, How Businesses Can Prepare for a World Where AI, the Metaverse, and location independence is changing the way we work and play. Please welcome Ileana. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an absolute delight to, to be here. As you've heard in the introduction, I spend most of my days working with Fortune 500 organizations and helping them to stay abreast of all of the changes in the world. But I also am very heavily involved in the startup community as an advisor, as an investor, and I'm very keen to make sure that all of you in the room, while you're so busy, focused on your business and servicing your clients and getting so deep into the problem space that you're solving for, it's important that you take the time to pay attention to how the world around us is changing. And the reality is that between the emerging technological advancements and equally important, the social changes afoot, that you're staying up to date. It can be very overwhelming though. And this is feedback I hear time and time again from founders across industries. Between what's happening in the content creation domain, an industry that in 2022 was valued at $104 billion and changing the way that humans interact with content creators, changing the way that we consume information, the way that we make purchasing decisions, to looking at the changes in the metaverse domains, what's happening in artificial intelligence, what's happening with the location independence or digital nomad trend, it can be really difficult to figure out how do you make sense of it? And there is another risk that entrepreneurs face, which is that when you do lift your head above the day-to-day -day of your business, it can be so easy to get trapped in understanding the nuance of a graphics processor chip and how it's built, which may or may not be as relevant to the business that you're building day in and, and day out. So the intention of our time together, which is only 20 or 25 minutes, is to walk you through all of these tech trends, help stitch them together into one comprehensive story, and help you envision the year 2025. I've chosen 2025 very intentionally. It's only 18 months from now. We have a tendency of fixating on what the world might look like in 10 years, and typically those predictions tend to be very far off. And I'm often asked the question when I talk about emerging trends, well, do I really need to pay attention to this now? I'm busy. Can I pay attention to this a year from now? And the answer is no. 
to be for Ublink, and the future will already be here. And in particular, I'll break down today's conversation into how humans are going to work, how humans are going to socialize and play and keep themselves amused, how we will consume content, and what this means for a startup in building and running a truly borderless business. As we get started, and to illustrate the point that the technology is already here, it's just not always evenly distributed yet, I'll ask you to think about what these three images behind me have in common. One is a hair salon, a chair, a journalist article from the Globe and Mail, and the third is a picture from a conference geared towards retailers and specifically marketing executives. I'll tell you a story to bring this, bring this to life. A few months ago, I was sitting in the hairdresser's chair and the topic of metaverse came up. The hairdresser had actually never tried on a headset and I happened to conveniently have one in my purse, as one does. I actually often travel with it in my carry-on luggage, even though the security people at airports are like, ma'am, what is this? A VR headset, followed by, you travel with this? The answer is yes. <laughs> yes, I do. And so he put on the headset and I transported him into one Accenture Park. It's the virtual space we have created with perfect replicas of our various offices around the world. And he was touring through our San Francisco location. And he's like, oh, this is really interesting. And suddenly he takes off the headset and looks a little bit surprised. Okay, what's, what's going on? And he says, there's an avatar. It's talking to me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I put on the headset and sure enough, there's a colleague of mine from our German office that happened to have been touring through San Francisco. And he just so happens to work in the sustainability space. I do a lot of work in that domain and we agreed to exchange contact details and to share some materials. The hairdresser looks at me and says, did you just network in the metaverse? Yes, yes, yes I did. <laughs> so fast forward a couple of short weeks and we were organizing this conference for marketers. And we had asked the audience, what are the topics you really want us to, to cover? And they all said, metaverse. Okay. So instead of the four panelists getting together and flying in to be in the same location, or simply getting on a Zoom call where you have the little square boxes, we figured, why don't we have this conversation in alt space, in a virtual world environment? And we will live stream the content from that conference to our audience members. And I can tell you, it felt so much more genuine to be having that kind of a virtual conference interaction as opposed to static Zoom. Fast forward a few more weeks and a journalist reached out from the Globe and Mail on the back of a recent Accenture investment in a company called Formavision. And Formavision essentially allows the beaming in of very realistic holograms into, into a physical space. So she came in, but it wasn't a traditional media interview. We shook hands to confirm that we were in fact real humans in 3D, but then we went off to two separate rooms. We put on our headsets and she also was transported into one of our virtual spaces. We brought her into the space that we now onboard new joiners into. Example, we have a wonderful summer intern that's at Accenture here in the audience somewhere. And as part of her onboarding, along with over 150,000 other people, a portion of it was done in a virtual environment. The journalist, her mind was blown and her feedback was, wow, this isn't all that futuristic. This is here, this is happening, this is happening now. And the answer is yes, which is why I've chosen to put us squarely in the year 2025. So the way we work is evolving we are going to have an increasing number of virtual collaboration tools that make for seamless communications. Whether you're using Mobius, a company that has essentially taken your computer and is converting it into a glass screen, you'll see the image on, on the bottom right hand side where imagine you're on a phone call, you're sharing your screen and instead of fumbling to open up your various tabs, you and the content on the screen is available in real time. You gesture to the right, things on your PowerPoint slides come, come to life. 
that's going to make meetings certainly interesting. Combine it with the ability to introduce a hologram. Combine it with this 3D rendering example from Kia that brings together their designers from around the world to do their design reviews, which used to take a matter of weeks, and now, as a result of this technology, can be done in a matter of hours. Quite substantial, and it shows that the future of work isn't just for the tech companies that are working behind a whiteboard, but can also be used in a number of fields. And the last example on this slide is everything we're seeing in generative AI. Not a surprise, this had to be here. I was actually having this conversation with um, an amazing designer on my team recently who expressed a desire to do more work in the, the branding domain. And I said, great, let's do it. But the job you play today still needs to be done somehow by someone. Are you spending a couple of hours a week learning all the new Gen AI design tools out there? Because if you're not, you need to be. Use this to automate 50% of your job, and then let's think about how we can use all of that time that we're freeing up for you to keep learning and developing new skills in the areas you want your career to go into. As an entrepreneur, the question I want each of you to be thinking about is, are you encouraging your team members to stay up to date with the latest and greatest technologies? Because that also happens to be part of your responsibility. But all work and no fun does not make for an exciting existence. So how will we spend time? Imagine it's a Friday. You're tired, you've had a long work day, you don't necessarily feel like venturing very far, but you're a fan of music. Perhaps you'll dial into a virtual concert. Travis Scott actually broke a record and had almost 27 million unique visitors to a concert that he had done in Fortnite. Megan Thee Stallion introduced a virtual concert tour where you have the ability to go into a movie theater, not dissimilar to what we have here right now, to don a specialty headset and to interact with a customized performance. Perhaps you don't even have to go very far because you will just have those performers beamed in to your living room in a hologram in the not so distant future. It's not just the independent creators and artists, though, that are venturing into the space. You have large corporations, including Nike, that just recently announced a collaboration with Fortnite and Epic. And if you were to connect your Nike account with your Epic Games account, Nike would give you a new NFT. An NFT, as you've heard in some of the previ previous talks, is a non-fungible token. It's not just a piece of artwork. And it's not just a collectible that gets traded and where people are thinking about the value and the price of this asset. NFTs are now being used to represent your membership in a community. And it's also meant to represent your ownership of a digital asset. And the Nike NFT, once you have it, and once you spend at least 10 minutes in this virtual world that they want you to experiment and poke around in, you will then be rewarded with a digital pair of shoes that you can wear in Fortnite. How many of you game, if I could get a quick show of hands? Okay, we have a couple, a couple of hands that are going up, great. As a founder, it is so important for you to think about how the people that you are ultimately trying to service are spending their evenings and weekends. How is the experience that they're having in these down moments going to change the expectations they have of you and the service that you provide. As an example, if I know exactly where my Uber Eats delivery is down to the block, but if I apply for a passport renewal and six months have gone by and I have no idea if they've received the application, if it's being processed, when it might be available, that's a challenge. And the private sector expectations are affecting public sector expectations. The same thing is true of people's off time and people's on time. So if we shift gears and think through how we will consume content in the future, our TV binging sessions are going to go the way of the dodo bird, and instead we'll be watching content. 
there will be content created for every niche imaginable. And not just large scale influencers, but we're seeing the rise of micro influencers as well. How many of you have heard of Prime, the beverage? A handful, great. I am assuming you don't have teenage children at home or Gen Z um, employees. In fact, our Gen Z employees even said, are you familiar with Prime? The next association is Logan Paul. Of course, Logan Paul's brand. And they try the product. The product itself can be meh, but it's not about the product. It's about the fear of missing out, and it's about the ability to prove that by purchasing this beverage, which is essentially Gatorade with coconut water and the option of adding caffeine into it, by buying this beverage, you're displaying that you have a relationship of some sorts with the creator. Mr. Beast followed the same playbook, launching a series of ghost kitchen restaurants, specifically serving burgers. And in a very short period of time, they hit 300 stores and then 1,000 locations, which puts Mr. Beast's burger franchise on par with a chain like Applebee's, a very common US chain. It's a Saturday, you're hungry, you open up the pantry in your kitchen, and you take out a box of cereal. But it's not any regular cereal. It's the good morning, good night cereal. Plays on an expression commonly used in the Web3 space. And you're actually a part owner of this company because you're an early investor in this brand new consumer packaged goods enterprise. But it's not a traditional enterprise. It's actually a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but people in the blockchain space are usually not known for being really good at marketing and branding and explaining things simply. If any of you are interested in a career change, please, there's lots of demand for, for that, in that in that sector. But think of it as a co-op, as a collective. And people have pooled funds, they've decided we're going to create consumer packaged goods products, cereal happens to be one of them, and every time a box of this cereal is sold, the early founders are all receiving a royalty payment in, in return. And the picture that's on the cereal of the monkey with the colorful teeth, that's actually an avatar. And her name is Bored Becky. Bored Becky is part of a collection called the Bored Ape Yacht Club. You've likely heard of it. And the woman behind the avatar is Canadian. She lives in Vancouver and was starting to use this Bored Becky avatar as her online persona. And as her social media presence grew up, she became an influencer. So now in the future, we're seeing an entirely new form of business entity creating a product with partnerships, with characters that are really avatars from an NFT collection. The future of commerce is changing. As an entrepreneur, the question for you is, are you prepared for that? Does this in any way, shape or form change your current strategy or your future strategy? Is there anything that you can glean inspiration here to apply within your own business? How we engage with customers. Have you ever purchased a product by looking at it online and asking, I wonder if this watch is going to fit my wrist? I wonder if this coffee table is going to fit the dimensions of, of this home? Hmm, do I want that product? Maybe I'll scroll to something else, I'll come back to it. Here is a company, The Looking Glass, that makes the ability to go from a 2D surface to a 3D object. Instead of browsing a flat, static web page, the ability to see in near 3D and play around with an object is going to be absolutely groundbreaking for commerce. And the ability to engage with customers, whether or not they're in the same city or the same country as, as you. And customer experience, chatbots. For all of the buzz in the generative AI space, out there right now, 
one of the most commonly used applications that we're seeing a lot of excitement from in the large enterprise and in smaller companies as well is engagement with customers. But instead of using a traditional large language model where you don't control the data, you don't control the inputs, and it has the potential to hallucinate, there are companies like Ada that allow you to take all of your user manuals, all of your FAQs, all of your standard operating procedures, feed them into this tool, and now you have your own customized chatbot repository of information. So if a customer goes onto your website and says, can you please confirm what time these store hours are accessible to the public for me to come in and buy a product, it's fed with your latest information that you can control. Simple examples of emerging tech that could be applied in your business today to have a significant impact. The last piece. How might you run a borderless business in the next few years? If your employees can work from anywhere, are they likely to do that more often? Yes, they are. The statistics show that digital nomads, which is the term used for those who are working outside of the city or country in which they were originally hired, has quadrupled since 2020 and is projected to hit tens of millions of consumers. And the profile and the demographic of who is considered a digital nomad is also changing. Just in 2020, 36% of digital nomads reported earning an income of over 75,000 US dollars per year. Fast forward three years, and 36% now make over $100,000 per year. Long gone is the image of a 22-year-old sitting in a hammock in Bali, working as a freelance content writer, earning $15,000 a year. This trend now reflects your employee base. How do you manage a fully globally distributed workforce? Well, we've talked through some of the collaboration technologies out there that will make that work effective from an HR standpoint, heaps of implications and considerations for you. Luckily, we have all sorts of digital payment tools out there, great use case for the crypto advocates to be able to make payroll in multiple countries simultaneously. So your employees can be anywhere. Your customers could arguably also come from anywhere and interact with your products in the physical world, in the virtual world, and everything in between. So then that begs the question, where do you register your business? What does it mean to expand into a new geography? You are Latin American companies expanding into the Canadian market, spending physical time in Canada. 10 years from now, will a geographic expansion strategy for a company look the same way that it does today? I think the answer is no. In the previous talk, you heard about an embassy in the metaverse opened up by the Barbados government. That's the image on the bottom right-hand side of this slide as well. And the premise is, if you're launching a fully digital virtual business, you need to register it in just one country. The number of downstream considerations that this opens up are absolutely tremendous. On this note, I'm going to wrap up. I know you've drawn a lot of content today. I hope your takeaways are that as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, yes, keep the laser focus on the problems that you're solving, on the customers that you're serving, and how you're doing that. But as you expand into Canada, we like hockey here, and there's an expression you'll hear from Wayne Gretzky that says, go to where the puck is going. So make sure that you're carving out enough time in your day to notice the trends, whether they be in metaverse, whether it be in generative AI, whether it be in this trend of 
location, independence, and digital um, nomads, and consider the questions of, are you preparing for them accordingly? On that note, I will pause. Feel free to stay in contact afterwards. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Indiana. <laughs>